What it do, my good people? Boy, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to look at you. That's all I'm going to do. Here to talk about something that people always ask me, right? They ask me. They always say, what is it, what is it like to work inside of a jail, right? Now, the jail is different from the prison system or the shown up for real correctional facilities like those uh, maximums um, prisons and even mediums. A jail is far different, right? Let's go back a little step further. First of all, that line of work isn't for everybody. Now check this out. This line of work isn't for everybody. And one of the things we always say when somebody new come in trying to be a deputy sheriff, but working in the back of the jail, this is not for everybody. So don't take it as you being weak, especially if you are a male and you can't quite, uh, can't quite handle being inside of an institution where people are incarcerated. It's not for everybody. And this coming from myself, a little back history on me. I was a form, I'm a former deputy sheriff uh, here in Virginia, where I worked for seven years. And uh, to let let you all know, like what is it like working inside of a jail? First of all, people that's inside of the jail, this goes for a high level of everybody. Right now, like in the prison system, you may have high custody individuals where everybody's like a high custody type thing, prison, where they got to be shown up like under strict lock and key. But in the jail, you have everybody, right? You have from your minor, minor traffic offenses all the way up to your, to your murderers can be inside of the jail, but you do get uh, put in what we call a low custody day room, uh, a medium custody day room, or a high custody day room, depending on your on your case and whatever your charge might be. You know, we're not going to have somebody that's committed a, a rape or a murder in there with some, somebody. It shouldn't be. You shouldn't be in there with somebody in the unit for a little grand loss in the charge. You don't stole something over a certain amount of money which makes it a grand loss in there. Now you in there with somebody that don't kill three people. That just ain't gonna mix. So therefore you are separated depending on your uh your charges, whether you're a felon is a felony or a misdemeanor. So different states do stuff different ways. I'm only speaking on mine or where I used to work, but that's just some of the cases you have. You're not gonna put a uh, murderer inside of a day room or a cellmate in the jail with somebody that's in there for a DUI or somebody that's did a uh, grand loss in the charge for, for stealing. It's not going to happen, right? Therefore, when I was an FTO, and an FTO stands for a field training officer, therefore, I had the knowledge and the skills that when somebody got hired, they will be under me uh, during the shift for me to teach them the ins and outs of how to do your day-to-day -day, um, uh, routine in your job uh, when working in back of the jail. So working back there, to me, because, you know, everybody know I'm a stand-up comedian. That's what I do for a living now. And I always had a, a, a comedic mindset. So nothing really got to me, okay? Nothing really got to me. So I'm one of them individuals that was able to handle working around such individuals. It didn't bother me at all. I mean, I would laugh anything off. Uh, you, you couldn't piss me off or nothing because once again, you have to understand the mindset of these individuals. You have to come in there with a mindset that you're going home at the end of the shift, God willing, that don't let them get to you. Now, if you are a person that's, that's very sensitive. If you are very sensitive, well, hey, it may not be the job for you, or it may because you could make your skin a little bit tougher if you decide to stay and go on within the weeks, months, and years while you're working inside of a jail or a correctional facility. 
Because trust and believe, oh, they gonna cuss your ass out. Trust and believe, they gonna curse you out. So if you are someone that gets easily offended, if somebody calls you out your name, hey, you gonna, well, you gonna have a tough go at it. You got to have the right mentality and the right tough skin because they going to curse your ass out. Trust and believe. Just like anybody in the world, once you say yes, and as long as you're doing what they're asking you, you're doing what, what uh, they want you to do, you the coolest deputy in the world. You did cool. Oh, man, I like Smith, man. Hey, man, Smith, all right, man. Hey, boy, Smith, hey, C.O. Smith, Deputy Smith. Oh, boy, they good people, man. They good people, for real. Because you're doing everything they want you to do. So you're always going to be cool. If you got an extra trait, you give it to them because it's extra. You gave them an extra trait. Or if you did whatever it was. But the moment. You said no, stop, don't. They're going to curse your ass out. They're going to call you every name but a child of God. Everything under the sun besides what your mama named you. You got to have tough skin to work in back of the jail. they going to call you out your name. You have to trust and believe that and know that. Okay? They... they <laughs> <laughs> what uh I was walking down the, the floor and one of the guys called me at one of the day rooms. Scott, come here. So I goes over and said, What's up, buddy? What you need? He paused for a minute. I said, I ain't no goddamn dog. You call me some damn buddy. What's wrong with you, man? Man, get on my face, man. Call me some buddy like I'm a dog or something. I didn't know where that came from. He must have had some inside pissed offness in the inside of his chest cavity. Because all I said is, what's up, buddy? What you need? And because I called him buddy, he got offended and proceeded to give me a tongue lashing. Now, me being a simple guy I was, I just laughed it off when a couple of other guys, those across the other unit, said, Scott, he got mad because you called him buddy? So he got some inner issues going on, but that's just one of the stories that you got to have tough skin to work in that job. And the, and the list goes on that I'm going to give you in certain clips to let you know how tough your skin have to be. This we're going to call the verbal abuse in this clip. The verbal abuse of this clip for working inside of a jail or a correctional facility they gonna curse you out. I also worked at a juvenile correctional facility here in Virginia. Uh, two of them called, and one was called Beaumont Correctional Facility. It was for juveniles, and also Bonnell Correctional Facility for juveniles as well. Uh, once again, and definitely when you're dealing with the younger mindset, so you know they don't have any kind of conversation at all, but just to curse you out and call you all kind of names. You have to have tough skin to be in this line of work. I'm telling you, you got to have, you have to have tough skin to be in this line of work. Boy, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to look at you. It ain't for the weak of the heart working beside them jail walls because ain't nobody but there. It's just you. And back when I was working at Bonnell, it was me and my partner and the radio. That was it. You got to be able to hold your own. Like I said, as soon as you do something for them, okay, something you can do within your control. Something you can do with that's within the uh, policy and procedures. Something that you can do that's not breaking no rules. That's cool. But as soon as they ask you something, you say, no, I ain't doing that. Or no, I'm not doing that. You punk. You muck. Boy, and one of my famous, the famous lines, boy, if you have on that uniform, I'll beat your that's one of the famous lines you always get working inside a facility. If you ain't have on that uniform, I'll beat you. Or oh, you wouldn't be saying that if you ain't have that uniform on. I'm telling you, man, the stuff you hear on the day-to-day -day verbal, uh, verbal <laughs> attacks, 
you get inside of a correctional facility and working inside of the jail is something you never heard. And for all my ladies out there, for all my ladies, they don't hold no ball. You might have some that might show you some kind of respect. You might have some that show you some kind of respect. But other than all, boy, they're going to curse your ass out too. Boy, we're going to sit here and look at you. Yeah, they cursing you out too. All they saying, calling you every B under the you is B, your mama B, you, 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 you got a body odor down there. They is giving you the business once you said no, stop, don't, they can't have, and you're not doing something for them. Get ready for the verbal attacks. You have to have tough skin to work inside of a jail or a correctional facility. I'm just here to tell you. I'm just the messenger. Boy, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to look at you. That's all I'm going to do. And I'm going to give y'all day-to-day counts when I can. Every other day. Sometimes Twan is not as consistent on here as I should be. I'm grown and I got things to do. But this one right here is the verbal abuse you take while working in a correctional facility. And you have to have tough skin to work in a correctional facility. Like I said earlier in the clip that... This type of work or that kind of work is not for everybody. So don't take it as a slight on yourself if you're unable to handle such verbal abuse. I'm just talking about the verbal. We ain't talking about getting into the physical yet. The physical going to be on another clip. This is just about the verbal abuse. You have to have tough skin, right? Like one of the time, one of the deputies, female deputies came to me and was like, Sergeant, Sergeant Scott. That 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 day room, that 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 he said ain't call me a bitch. He don't ain't call me a bitch. I said, well, did you call him a bitch back? Boy, we are gonna sit there and look at you. Now you're not supposed to call them a be back, but hey, sometimes you gotta let them know I ain't the one to be playing with. Okay, what you're supposed to do, if you wanna go by policy and procedure and go by the book, you're supposed to write them up for verbal abuse. It was just a charge. Such and such on this date and time, day room such and such, uh, inmate resident, whoever it may be, uh, inmate number, dot, dot, dot. On this date and time, I was in day room such, 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 doing head count. And uh, uh, inmate Smith, number, dot, 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 called me a B, told me to uh, suck his blah, 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 blah. Your report, sign it. He gets served papers and got to go, go on a hearing or whatever, whatever. That's a whole other clip, too, when they go in a hearing, when you get yourself what we call a jailhouse lawyer. I'll tell y'all later what that is. But that's the correct way you're supposed to proceed if somebody calls you out your name and call you any kind of curse words or just call you out your name, period. Write them up on the charge. They might get the canteen taken away. They might get isolation. They might get no visitation. It could be a whole slew of things they may or may not get, depending on the hearing officer. But like I said, this is all about letting you know the verbal abuse and you have to have tough skin to work inside of a jail. So this here is what does it take to work inside of a correctional facility, whether it's a jail or just a correctional place to hold people for people in jail or holding them in the, in the, in the pathway to go into the prison system, the penitentiary, we call it the penitentiary to let you know what might go down with the verbal abuse. So how tough is your skin? Huh? Because some of y'all can't handle it. As soon as somebody call you out your name, you ready to fire. You ready to fire off on me. Huh? This job ain't for everybody, baby. It's only because the strong survive and the weak fall by the wayside. Sorry, Charlie. Only the finest get to be starkest. Only the pure in heart ride this gravy train. So until next time on the next episode of What Does It Take to Work Inside of a Jail or a Correctional Facility? Right here, your boy, Mr. Look at you. Ow! Former Deputy, Deputy Sheriff, former U.S. Marine. Ooh, rah! And I still have my arm and unarmed license. Boy, I am trained to go. But, but, don't let these jokes fool you. Bah! And I was a DT instructor. Woo! Woo! We'll snap this in what you want, player. I'm going to sit there and look at you. Until next time, people. Tune in next time. What does it take to work in a jail? You see it. <laughs>